Batting fifth, the D.H., Don Baylor. Batting sixth, Willie Randolph, second base. Batting seventh, just brought up, Juan Espino. Batting eighth, playing third base, is Dale Barra. And batting ninth will be the shortstop, Bobby Meacham. Defensively for the Tigers. Lemon and Gibson in the outfield. Lance Parrish behind the plate. And Frank Tanana making his first appearance as a Detroit Tigers. And of course, everyone knows a great, great pitcher at Catholic Central High School. He was uh, born in the Detroit area and uh, signed by the California. <laughs> Losses. He's making his third start versus the New York Yankees this season. He did not receive a decision in either of his two other starts. And he has to be feeling like a young kid here today, born and raised close by here in Detroit. Wanted always to be a Detroit Tigers. Things did not work. Pitch for the Boston Red Sox, Texas Rangers, and now here for the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Frank does not overpower the hitters like he once did when he was a young man and uh, with the California Angels. He's more of a pitcher now. He will not give in to the hitters. He will go and throw off-speed pitches, uh, change up curveball sliders will not challenge the hitters quite as much with the fastball as he once did when he was uh, a California Angels so he has to be thrilled to death to be out on the mound pitching for the Detroit Tigers a beautiful day here with it looks like a, another capacity crowd here George Kell yeah big crowd on hand Al they have drawn well extremely well all week as the Tigers have had a very exciting week of baseball the Red Sox were in town Starting on Monday night, the Tigers won two out of three from the Red Sox. They started here on Thursday night against the Yankees. This is the fourth game. The Tigers won the first two games of this series before losing yesterday. So they have a chance to have an extremely good week against two tough opponents from the American League East. Well, it's already been a good start, even the uh even if they should lose this ball game, which uh, I think they have a good chance of winning this against Bob Shirley here at Tiger Stadium. But uh, whenever you can uh, break even with a team that's been as hot as the New York Yankees, it's not bad. Yeah, the Yankees just left Baltimore where they swept the Orioles in three straight, and they scored a ton of runs against the Baltimore pitching. Ricky Henderson will lead it off. And the pitch is high. One ball, no strikes. Henderson has been red hot with a bat before Petrie shut him down yesterday, five for O. Look out, and it's ball two. Ball two, no strikes. This guy has been quite an offensive force for the New York Yankees, of course, leading the American League in hitting, but also supplying power with nine home runs. The 2 and 0 pitch. It's a strike. He got it in about knee high, and it's ball two and strike one to Henderson. And game like this, his first game, he has to be in control on the mound. Uh, Lance Parrish catching him for the first time. will let Frank dictate pretty much what he wants to throw. Strike two, another strike, and it's two and two to Henderson. Well, it looked like Ricky was looking for an off-speed pitch, a curveball, maybe a changeup, and he threw him a pretty good fastball inside corner. Ball two, strike two to Henderson. He leads it off, followed by Griffey, and then Don Mattingly. Here's a line drive into center, and it'll drop in for a base hit. So the leadoff man is on as Henderson sent a line drive to center field. We'll take a look at the pitch again. Of course, this guy has been red hot, throws him a sinking fastball. Not a bad pitch down in the strike zone, but uh, he is hitting everything. The ball must look like a basketball coming up to him. 
Here's Ken Griffey who has been on a tear of him of his own. In fact all of the Yankees have they've been making a lot of runs. Hey, this is a pretty good hitting lineup and uh, they look like uh, they have fire in their belly here today uh, in this series. They were very very embarrassed to, to lose those first two games to the Detroit Tigers. They have, they have a very good hitting ball club. Griffey hits it on the ground. They go to second for one and the relay a double play. Griffey hit it to Evans and he turns the double play. And Sonata knows that if he keeps the ball on the ground, this infield for the Detroit Tigers will do this many times for him. Close play at first base, but uh, Mike Riley calls him out. Double play. So at two outs, the batter will be Don Mattingly. Mattingly had a couple of hits in yesterday's game. 1984 batting champion in the American League. And a strike as Panetta gets it over. Yeah, he it. came on like gangbusters last year, George. He didn't give the impression that he's that great a hitter. He only batted 283 for the uh, Yankees a year before that. Pitch outside makes it one and one. But I think what surprised everybody in baseball was uh, the home run power that he supplied. He never hit that many home runs in the minor leagues. He had 23 home runs last year. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. And he hits it. Fair ball into the corner. Out of the reach of Evans. And a two-base hit from Mattingly as he goes into second. So Don Mattingly is on with a double with two outs. One of my pet peeves in, uh, in baseball is with two outs. First base and third base not guarding the line. Give the guy a single in the hole, but don't let him get in scoring position. Of course, that's hindsight, but uh, that's just my feeling. Pretty good hitter. Well, it's percentage baseball, Al, and uh, and you're right. It's 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 been an adage in baseball for years. With two outs, you guard the line. And this one skipped between Evans and the line into the corner. He's at second, and he's pitching to the strong right-handed hitter, Dave Winfield. This big fella has really been hitting the ball hard. He takes it outside. Yeah, he's pulling the ball a lot more than he did in previous years. He used to use a lot more of the field, right center, left center. And every once in a while when they throw him a breaking ball, he would, uh, you know, hit the ball out of the ballpark. But he has been uh, pulling the ball, as you said, George. You, he, you think he hits the ball down the third base as hard as anybody you've ever seen. He hits it foul down the left field line. This Herndon in the corner, and he can't get it. I talked to Dave Winfield before the game today, and I told him that in all of my career, I thought DiMaggio hit the ball harder into left field and down the left field line than anybody I'd ever seen. He'd hit some shots that you just barely had time to get your glove down. But I said, I think maybe you hit the ball harder. And he said, well, I'm pulling the ball much more than I ever did before. And that might be one of the reasons. You just got to look at the last pitch. He pulled it down the line in left field. He had two base hits to left field yesterday, one on each side of Brookings. This is going to be a whole base. lot of trouble. It's a base hit. Uh, that's one of the prices you have to pay with a guy at Winfield at the plate. Everybody plays extremely deep. Brookins comes in to get it, but he can't make a throw. And you see that he swings down on the ball, and he will top the ball just like this many times, and he has very good speed. So there's just nothing you can do about it. You have to play back because he hits the ball so hard if you're going to make the play, and, and that's going to happen on occasions. So they have him at first and third, and the batter is Baylor, who had a home run yesterday. 12 home runs, 45 runs batted in, and a strike on the inside corner. And I didn't like to see the home run by this guy because he is very much a streak hitter and when he gets hot he can hit the ball and will hit the ball consistently for five six seven games Mattingly the runner at third Winfield at first with two outs 
Frank Tanana delivers. Ooh, it was close. One and one. Gives you some idea of how they'd like to pitch Baylor, even though Tanana does not throw hard. He jammed him with both of those pitches. Yeah, he pulls the ball foul an awful lot when you pitch him inside. Ball two, strike one. The inning started with a single by Ricky Henderson. Ken Griffey hit the first pitch to Evans. They turned the double play. Mattingly doubled into the corner. Winfield had an infield single. And they have them at first and third with two outs. And it's ball three. Ball three, strike one to Baylor. And Lance Parrish not uh, too happy with those calls. And uh, in fact, very seldom you ever see Lance turn around. He might say something to the umpire, uh, you know, while he's down in his position. But he turned around that time and talked to the umpire. And Frank Tanana will be very happy to get out of this inning. The umpire behind the plate today is Al Clark. Mike Riley from Battle Creek is on at first base. Drew Coble is at second. And Don Dinkinger, the umpire at third base. Ball three strike one to the big guy with two on and two outs in the first inning. As Frank Tanana gets ready. He swung at a fastball. Up and in out of the strike zone. And he had a rip at it. I would imagine uh, he's going to change up on him or something. Tough decision. What do you throw this big guy with? The runners going. Ball three, strike two. And he pops it high in the air in the left field. Larry Herndon is there, and the inning is over. So Panana gets out of a big jam in the first inning, two on and two out. And Clark and Parrish are going at it at home plate. Parrish didn't like to call on a couple of them, and they're having it. No scores. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Please. Batting second, Alan Trammell, shortstop. Batting third to right fielder, Kirk Gibson. Batting fourth, Lance Parrish, the catcher. Batting fifth, Larry Herndon in left field. Batting sixth to DH, Barbaro Garbet. Batting seventh, Daryl Evans, first base. Batting eighth, Chet Lemon, center field. Batting ninth to third baseman is Tom Brookins. Defensively for the Yankees, Barrow, Meacham, Randolph, and Mattingly, Griffey, Henderson, and Winfield in the outfield. Juan Espino behind the plate, his first ball game for the Yankees this season, just called up to catch this ball game. And Bob Shirley on the mound, you see his record, two wins, one loss, an excellent 2.64 earned run average, making his third start of the 85 season and second start against the Yankees and he completely gassed the Detroit Tigers in in New York he beat them two to one he went nine innings allowed only four hits one run one earned run that earned run was a home run by Gibson he walked two and struck out five the eight-year veteran the of the National League and uh, the last couple years with the Yankees last year with the Yankees three wins and three losses for Bob Shirley pitching for the Yankees Whitaker Trammell and Gibson will be the Tiger batters and the pitchers outside to Whitaker Lou did not play in yesterday's game against the left-hander Gidry there's a foul ball that'll be out of play Newly acquired Doug Flynn played at second base yesterday. He had one hit and performed flawlessly in the field. I'm going to get ball two. Ball two, strike one. Tigers have won a couple of great come from behind ball games in this series. They had to score three in the ninth inning on Thursday night to tie it. They came from behind on Friday night, behind 3 nothing, and won that one. Bob Shirley not as effective on the road as he is in Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium, a little bigger ballpark, particularly in right center, left center fields. 
His record uh, is much better at home than on on the road. Ball three strike two to Whitaker as he leads it off for the Tigers in the first inning. And he struck him out. Whitaker foul tipped it right into the mitt of Espino. Is that how you, is that how you pronounce that Espino? Espino. That's Espino. what I was told by Bill White. The you see the good sinking fastball. Lou uh, usually will swing under the ball but that time swung over, over top of the pitch. So there's one out and the batters trammel. Allen batting at 284 with six home runs. And it's outside one ball. Allen seems to be getting back on track even though he's batting I say only 284 because we're used to Allen Trammell hitting well over 300. It's good year blimp. Here's one into left center field. Ricky Henderson is there and he'll put it away. Trammell hit the ball rather well but Henderson with great speed ran it down. Yeah, what I was about to say Allen seems to have a much quicker a firmer swing now than he was uh, the last three or four weeks so he's looks like he's back on target again. Good running play by the very fast Ricky Henderson in center field. That'll bring up Gibson with two outs and nobody on. Gibby had a long, long home run against this fellow in New York. He's, they're still talking about that home run in New York, by the way. I'll tell you, the one he hit here the other night wasn't too shabby. <laughs> it was a line drive to hit the facing. He told me yesterday he hit it much harder, much harder than the one in New York. He pops this one up on the infield into shallow center field. Ricky Henderson gets under it and he puts it away. So the Tigers go out one, two, three, nothing across, and at the end of one, no score. After the ball game, they'll fly to Boston where they'll open a big three game series at Fenway Park, our first visit to Boston this year. And we'll be there on Tuesday night and again on Wednesday night. And the way these two clubs are hitting the Red Sox and the Tigers that should be a very interesting three game series. Willie Randolph will lead it off. And he takes a strike. Maybe Parrish and Al Clark got it all worked out at the end of the first inning. They have met for a couple of minutes along the third baseline and nothing heated about the discussion. They just talked about it. Strike two. All so depends on who's hitting. Tanana throwing more fastballs. Yes, he than is. Uh, yes, I, I'm, I've been surprised, and he's. Uh, I think he surprised the Yankees hitter so far. They've been taking his fastball. And the strike two pitch. That'll make it one and two to Willie Randolph. Juan Espino will follow, and then Dale Barra. Frank still only 31 years old. Count goes even at two and two to Randolph. He has 11 and a half years in the major leagues and still only 31 years old. It's a lot of good pitching left in his arm. This ball is in the hole and in the left field. Willie Randolph bounces it just out of the reach of Trammell. And he's on with a hit. That's the fourth hit off Tanana. And they've been pretty much all the ground ball type. You see another excellent pitch low and away, but uh, you see there, even the ball took a bad hop, although I don't believe uh, uh, Tommy Brookins would have been able to make the play. But that's all a man can do, particularly a Frank Tanana, to make them hit the ball on the, on the ground. And if they find a hole, there's nothing you can do about it. We're going to get a look at the new Yankee catcher here, Juan Espino. fellow was just called up from Columbus and we have no stats on exactly how he was doing at Columbus but uh, what he what he did last year uh, at 84 he batted 251 seven home runs and 41 RBIs curveball hangs outside and it's one ball no strikes talking to Bill White and uh, Phil Brizzuto the announcer for the, the New York Yankees they, they say he swings very very hard at the ball and uh, but has never hit for much of an average. He bats with a runner at first and nobody out. 
Butch Weininger, the number one catcher for the Yankees, was hit by a line drive in the on deck circle in Baltimore. And he's going to be out of action for a while. They said uh, he had the helmet on in the on deck circle. Otherwise, it would have been extremely serious. And the pitch. He pops it foul out of play. Give that man a contract. I tell you, there was a whale of a play in the upper deck by a young man who just speared that fly ball. One ball, one strike to Espino. That'll make it ball two. Really, for the first time in the ball game, Fernando has been throwing some curveballs. He figures this young man would be looking for the fastball. The veterans who've seen him the last few years be would be more looking for the curveball. Willie Randolph at one time was an excellent base dealer, but the last four years has not been running quite as often as he used to. He stole only 10 bases last year and he has three stolen bases this year. Ball two strike one to Espino. Ball three. Tonana has been behind a couple of batters. He hasn't walked anybody. He was behind Baylor. Ball three strike one. With two on in the first inning and got him on a pop fly. Now he doesn't want to walk this guy. He, he wants to make him hit the ball, even though he has a lot, some power, but he wants to make him try to hit the ball. And he pops it up on the infield. Boy, that sun is vicious out there today. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're watching Tigers 85. Now go for Detroit's doubleheader of game shows, Jeopardy, and the Wheel of Fortune. That's weeknight starting at 7 right here on Channel 4. There's one out as Dale Barra steps in, and Detroit fans will get their first look at the son of former manager and Hall of Famer Yogi Berra. This young man has spent all of his career in the National League with the Pittsburgh Ball Club before being traded to the Yankees. Used uh, both as a shortstop and a third baseman for Pittsburgh. He got a breaking ball over. One strike to Barra. He alternates at third base with Pagliarulo against right and left-handed pitching. Frank Tanana keeping a close eye on Willie Randolph. Willie opened this inning with a single to left. Espino popped it up and it's one strike to Barra. That'll make it strike two. Look out. Uh, with a strong breeze blowing to straightaway center field both Tanana and Bob Sherwood the pitcher of the Yankees trying to keep the ball down don't want throw too many pitches high in the strike zone so they can lift it up in that breeze. Dale Barrow waiting on the strike two pitch. One ball two strikes the Mets and Montreal are underway no score in the second inning Pittsburgh and Philadelphia no score in the first inning. Montreal a half game out of first place the Cardinals lead the National League West. There's a strike. Barrow was caught looking at a good fastball and he's out on strikes. Well I think he's more surprised than anything that he came inside but you see there right in the mitt Lance Parrish did not have to move the glove at all. 
Well, Al, our first trivia call is going to Toledo Ohio. Do you have that question? That's okay. Which former New York Yankee said, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a baseball player and join the circus? With the Yankees, I accomplished both. He's no longer with the Yankees. He was a great third baseman, left-handed hitter, now with San Diego. Oh, you, you're just going to give the answer now. Well, that's that's hard. I didn't give the answer. <laughs> you're kidding. I mean, if I wanted to give the answer, I'd give the initials. <laughs> Chuck Wozlick uh, just fell out of his chair. Bobby Meacham takes it outside, and it's ball two. He is no longer with the Yankees. He is not with the circus. No. <laughs> <laughs> he is home. He makes his home in San he Diego. He is home. And he said that's the only other place he wanted to play with San Diego. I guarantee you there'd be no circus with Dick Williams. <laughs> Meacham fouls it away. And speaking of San Diego and Dick Williams, he has those high-flying Padres going again. They're four and a half games out in front. Yeah, they look like the best team in that division by far, particularly since Atlanta is struggling. I said a moment ago the Cardinals leading the National League West. If they lead the National League East, obviously. Well, I saw some replays last night, a recap of baseball yesterday. You talk about some big crowds. San Diego at 51,000. They had a full house in New York, a full house in Toronto, a full house in St. Louis, and here in Detroit, 42,000. Baseball drawing as they have never drawn before. And how about the Cubs? They have lost 10 in a row. Tell you, not a bad time to lose. If you're going to lose 10 in a row, not a bad time to do it. They're still not far out. The 3-1 pitch goes to first base. You would hate to lose 10 in a row come September. Let's see where the Cubbies are. They are still only three and a half out after losing Absolutely. 10 in a row. Can you believe it? Here's a base hit. Ball goes up the middle. Randolph will hold it second as Bobby Meacham. Drilled a 3-1 fastball through the middle into center field. So Frank Tanana still trying to fight him off. Yankees with two on, two outs, and he'll face Ricky Henderson. Looks like Frank uh, hasn't been able to establish any kind of a breaking pitch so far today. You know? he's, he's not been able to get a breaking ball over, hasn't having to uh, throw his fastball more than I've ever seen him in the last couple of years. Ricky Henderson had a single his first time up. He lined it to center field. He bats now with a runner at second, a runner at first, and two outs. Here's the curveball. He got it over. Ricky Henderson says, uh, might have been a little high. I don't know why more hitters don't try to establish a batting stance like this, and particularly the weaker hitters who have very small strike zone. One ball, one strike. There was a lot of people wondered how Ricky Henderson was going to fit into the Big Apple. And the answer is he has fitted like a glove. I think he was made for the Big Apple. Well, Billy Martin said he's the best player in baseball right at this time. Ball two, strike one. Some people go to New York and they just cannot handle the press and the crowds and the big city and everything that goes with Yankee tradition. But this fellow handled it. Billy Martin, Jackson handled it. Ground ball to third and Brookins will make the play. So Frank Tanana gets out of another jam as Henderson hits the ball straight to Brookings at third. We go to the bottom of the second. A nothing, nothing ball game. So, so what? Want to join? Join a health club? Learn pain? Ah, oh, this gets the kinks out. Let's have it with the kinks in. Relax. Two more things to try. Like what? Lounge and lawn brow. Great. The beer will pour my say so. 
something more right now. I think I'll just join the lounge. Tonight, let it be low and brown. Did you ever stop to contemplate what makes ballpark Frank so great? They stress, uh -huh. they grow. Uh -huh. It's a really big shoe. Bum, 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 bum. They're delicious, they're sublime. So let's bring them out here. One more talk. Bum, 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 bum. They enlarge, they expand. Let's give them all a really big hand. Bum, 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 bum. Ballpark Franks, they plump when you cook them. Oh, yeah. This book confirms something very important you should know about the Chevy Cavalier from your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Look at what it says about Chevy Cavalier and Ford Escort. Right now, at trade-in time, a Cavalier is worth over $1,000 more than the Ford Escort. $1,000. And believe me, at trade-in time, that makes a difference. If $1,000 makes a difference to you, see Les Stanford, Off Whalen, or Bernie Hoot Chevrolet and drive the better value Chevy Cavalier. Come the Tigers in the second inning. Parrish will lead it off. Herndon and Garvey will follow. Well, we have a trivia winner. Art Cal of Toledo correctly answered our question, and Art has won two tickets to a Tiger home game. What was that question? Okay, former New York Yankee said, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a baseball player and join the circus. With the Yankees, I accomplished both. Of course, the great third baseman, Craig Nettles. I give him credit. That's a great statement. Oh, I tell you, he comes up with some great lines. Very funny man. One ball, no strikes to perish. I tell you, he was and is a still outstanding yeah, third baseman. Yeah, he still plays extremely well at the age of, what, 40, 41? We'll have another trivia question for you from Boston on Tuesday night. Ball two, no strikes to perish. Ball three. Bob Shirley moved right through the first three batters. He struck out Whitaker, got Trammell and Gibson to fly to center field. He is behind Parrish, 3-0. and oh. And he walked it. So the Tigers get their first base runner. And the batter will be Larry Herndon. Larry's still trying to reach that power swing that he had in 82 and 83. He hit 23 home runs in 82 and had 20 home runs in 83. He fell off to seven home runs last season. And a strike on the inside corner. They're underway in Toronto. No score at the end of one. How about that game yesterday? A three-hour, 16-minute rain delay. <laughs> I don't mind it as long as somebody else. <laughs> that sent even the players' wives home, I think. <laughs> Boston was behind 3-2 in the fifth inning. Bottom of the fifth, really, when uh, the game was delayed. And they came back to win it 5-3. There goes the runner. Fly ball down the line and right. It's curving away from Winfield and foul. He might have caught it at it stayed fair, although it was only a yard outside the line. Take another look here. See, do you think he would have caught it out? Yeah, if it stayed fair, he had a shot at yeah, it. Yeah, he had a pretty good chance. You know, he he looks like he's never going to get to a ball, but those long legs of his, uh, and he can still run. So it's one and two to Herndon. Surely having to do a little house cleaning at the mound. One ball, two strikes, runner at first, nobody out. Count goes even at two and two. Boy, a big crowd on hand, and they're really into the ball game. From the very first pitch, they were into the game. They haven't had much to cheer about yet from the Tigers. 
Ball two strike two. There goes the runner again and a foul tip. Sparky trying to stay out of the double play giving Herndon a chance. Boy I always like to hit with with that guy moving from first. You've got everybody moving the shortstop. One of them's got to cover the other one's going to give a little ground. I think what a lot of hitters uh, problems cause some of the hitters is that they try to be too fine and hit the ball in a hole instead of going up there and swinging and trying to hit the ball hard wherever the ball is pitched. Yeah just put it in play yeah. and normally you do if uh, you got the guy running you're just going to be sure you hit the ball you put it in play and a lot of things can happen. Two strike two to Herndon. Bob Shirley gets ready. Yankees are in a position they had rather not pitch out. They're not at all sure that Parrish is not going to run, so Shirley holds him close. Herndon steps out. We've got a breeze blowing to right field, but nothing at all like the strong breeze we had yesterday. Larry fouls this one away. He got the fastball up and in on him, and he fought it off. Larry Herndon been a much better hitter against left handers throughout his career than uh, than right handers. I think his career averaged 314 against left handers 239 against right handers. Tigers trying to get something going they have a runner at first with nobody out. Herndon waits on the 2 2 pitch from Shirley. Crowd getting a little impatient with Shirley as he continues to throw over to first base. He knows that Parrish is not going to steal, but uh, the hit and run play has been on twice. He'd like to catch Lance on his way. Goes full at three and two, and more than likely he will be running. Ball three, strike two. And you can see Bob Shirley not nearly as confident pitching here in uh, the confines of Tiger Stadium as he is in the big ballpark of uh, Yankee Stadium. He's not willing to challenge the hitters quite as much here as he is in the big ballpark. Ball three, strike two. We'll check Parrish. Here's a base hit in the left. He's headed for third. Here's the throw, and he is in safely. Larry Herndon drilled it past Meacham into left field. And Lance Parrish challenging the arm of Ken Griffey in left field. Herndon hits this ball hard. A shot past the shortstop. The ground, you can see it looks like it's very hard. The ball is bouncing all over the place. And I tell you, this is an effort for the big guy whose legs uh, have to be getting sore because of all the getting up and down as a catcher. But he lets it all loose and beats the throw to third base. Hey, Herndon could have walked down to second. The throw is well over the head of Meacham and nobody to cut it off. But Larry elected to hold it first. So the Tigers have them at first and third with nobody out, and the batter is Garbay. Well, they've got the third baseman in close. Mattingly holds against the runner, and they're in about halfway at second and short. Oh, 
One ball to Garvey. Well, one of the reasons for this, they might make a play at the plate, and they know they got a left-handed batter coming up, so they're not just going to concede a run this early in the game unless they have to. One ball, no strikes to Garvey. And he hits it to third. Here he comes to the plate, and they've got him in a hang-up. Good play by Lance Perth. Excellent play by Lance Perth. All you can do, he did a great play, good base running. Outstanding, allowing both runners to go down to third and second base. A poor play by the catcher, who should have challenged Lance, run as hard as he could to third base and make one throw if possible. Take a look at it again. Lance Parrish was instructed to go on anything on the ground. He holds up. Now the catcher's got to run the man back and then make one throw, but he just uh, did not charge Lance Parrish. Oh, <laughs> the ball almost got by the pitcher. Lance able to get in the rundown, and you can see Larry Herndon on third base. I remember Steve O'Neill saying one time when uh, he was manager here and I played, he said, anytime you get the pitcher to handling the ball in the rundown, you are in trouble. <laughs> And they wound up with a pitcher covering the plate. Second and third, one out. And a strike to Darrell Evans. They've still got the infield in at first and third. And they're back at second and short. So they're going to let Herndon score on a ground ball to second or short. And a ground ball to first. Here he comes to the plate. And he is out. Any place else but first base, a run scores, but he pulls the ball, hit the ball hard, but it was right at the third first baseman who was playing in close. Well, well, how many times you see a ground ball on the ground, the second base or shortstop scores a run. This time you see Mattingly playing in close and makes an easy throw to home plate. So it'll be up to Lemon to get the run in. The Tigers had him at first and third. Nobody out, and they have him at first and third with two outs. Chet Lemon playing for the first time in several days. Here's a long drive. If it stays fair, it is foul ball. Not by much. Oh, he hit it a mile, but pulled it foul. Looked like for a moment it might be going to catch the foul pole. Yeah, he hit it so hard that I don't think the wind had a chance to affect it. You see there, just missing the, the uh, foul pole. If, I think if he hit it, hit it a little higher, the wind would have carried in fair territory. And the one-strike pitch goes to first base. Shirley gets ready. Strike two. He swung at a bad pitch, and Shirley is out in front with a strike two count. The Yankees able to get out. If they're able to get out of this inning, could be a, a real charge for them. They could really hype them up. The Tigers have had them on the ropes this inning. It's strike two to Lemon. Garvey is the runner at third. Evans at first with two outs. He struck him out. Chet Lemon strikes out, and the inning is over. The Tigers threaten and fail to score. So at the end of two full innings of play, it's still nothing, nothing. Into a double play his first time up. And the pitch from Tanana. It's a ball. One ball, no strikes. Yankees have five hits off Tanana, but he's fought them off when it counted. Ball two. Ball two, no strikes. He hasn't walked anybody, and he has struck out one. Right down the middle with a fastball. 
Ball two, strike one. And the pitch. Ball three. Three and one to Griffey. Frank Tanana gets the sign and the pitch. Little pop fly, one hop to third, and Griffey's out. He hit him right on the fist, and he blooped it down to third base. That's the first out of the inning. And it'll bring up Don Mattingly. Take a look at this again. Yeah, he gets him on the handle pretty good. The normally, uh, Tanana doesn't hit too many people on the fist because he doesn't throw hard anymore, but that time uh, had a good moving fastball on the hands. Mattingly had a double his first time up. Breaking ball outside. This ball picked off by Tanana, and that makes an easy play out of it. Had the ball gotten by Tanana, it would have been a tough play for Whitaker. Well, Frank Tanana always has been noted as a good fielding pitcher. This time, a uh, ball hit on the end of the bat, as you, George Kell just mentioned. Had it gotten by Frank, it could have been a very difficult play. And again, rather than putting the ball, flipping the ball, taking the chance of a possible error, he made the play himself. I like that, I Al. I, I like that. Don't put it in play unless you have to. Here's Winfield. He had an infield single his first time up. Big guy takes it in tight. Toronto got two in the third inning, and they lead Boston 2-0. There's one hit into deep center field, but there's a lot of room out there. It away a one two three inning for Tanana. We go to the bottom of the third. Nothing, nothing. Hits. And the pitch from Shirley. It's a strike to Brookins. One strike to Tommy. Shirley. Pitch last Sunday in New York against the Tigers. He had a 1-1 ball game going into the ninth. The Yankees scored a run to win it. 2-1. So he has pitched extremely well against the Detroit Ball Club. Fly ball, center field. Ricky Henderson moves back. Tommy Brookins is out to start the third inning. The batter will be Lou Whitaker. Well, after each televised Tiger victory, Al and I will be announcing the light beer player of the game, and the winner will have $100 donated in his name to the Children's Hospitals of Michigan by the Miller Brewing Company. Here's Whitaker, and he takes it low. Lou struck out his first time up. Sweet Lou came into the ball game uh, leading the Tigers and hitting with 321, but 12 home runs already this season. This tops in the major leagues is 15. There's a bunt, and this may be a dandy. Let's see. Out at first base on a close play, and a great play by Shirley and Mattingly. Whitaker dumped it down there about as well as you can, but the Yankees made it as well, well as you can make it, I too. I didn't think there was any way they were going to get Lou Whitaker on this play. An outstanding play and a uh, bang-bang play at first base, and it looked like the right call. It, it sure did. Mike Riley made what looked like the right call. It was the right call. Just an outstanding play from Mattingly and Shirley. There's a strike, one strike to Trammell. 
Well, Shirley recovered quickly. He fell toward third base as he pitched to Whitaker, and he made a great recovery. Here's a base hit. Camo drills it through the middle in the center field. That's the second Tiger hit. Trammell's hit first with two outs. The batter is Gibson, who flied to center field his first time up. Well, the wind has picked up now. It's blowing hard into right field. Well, they say that possibility of some rain late on later on this afternoon. All you have to do is hit a medium deep fly ball in, uh, in right field, and I think it'll carry out. Easier said than done. Now, Gibby doesn't hit many medium deep. No. He either puts it in play real good or he'll pop it up. Gibson has hit safely in eight of his last nine games, 16 for 40, a 400 batting average with four home runs. Uh, he was blanked yesterday by a tough left-hander. One ball, no strikes to Gibson. Runner at first and two outs. He stayed right on that curveball, but he didn't get it. I've said this before. Gibson probably looks for more pitches than anybody on the Tiger ball club. Looked like, in that case, looking for a breaking ball, but just swung and missed it. Mattingly says, I got him. Well, tell you, you can't go back to that base nonchalant. Allen, who has had trouble with his knees, looks like he turned his ankle. Oh, I don't know. Pitch outside to Gibby, makes it ball two. Ball two, strike one. Shirley gets ready on the 2-1 pitch. Gibby swung at a bad one, and the count goes even at 2-2. Two and two. Ball two, strike two. Gibson leading the Tigers in home runs and RBIs. Edges off at first base, and surely he'll take another look at him. They might want to run on this young catcher, the new fellow just brought up. And he strikes him out. Gibby strikes out on a high curveball. At the end of three, the Yankees nothing and the Tigers nothing. Gets him on three straight pitches. Second strikeout for Tanana. Great arm motion with a straight changeup. Tanana rears back. Looked like he's throwing a fastball. You can see there Don Baylor well out in front of that pitch. So with one out, the batter is Willie Randolph, who had a single his first time up. strike he got a fastball over one strike to Randolph has to be one of the great trades in baseball history traded from Pittsburgh to the Yankees for Doc Medich and Medich never could put it together after leaving the Yankees one ball one strike as Tanana looks in to get the sign from Parrish bounces it to Trammell That's out number two here in the fourth inning. And the batter will be Juan Espino. Let's look at our upcoming TV schedule. 
We're going to be in Boston now, Tuesday night. That'll be a 7 o'clock ball game. We'll be there on Wednesday night, June 26th at 7.30. Then from uh, Tiger Stadium next weekend, Saturday, we'll be here on Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Sunday at 1 o'clock against the Blue Jays, and that's going to be a big weekend of baseball. Tigers went into Toronto, played four, split the four ball games, and now the Blue Jays come in for three this weekend, next weekend. Here's one up the middle. Under the glove of Trammell, and Espino is on. I think Allen kept waiting for that ball to come up, and it stayed down under his glove. Yeah, I think he's a little disappointed he didn't make the play. Uh, looked like he was going to get up to it, to the ball. The ball does stay down, and right there just under his glove of course we couldn't see the reaction of Allen after the fact but uh, looked like he was a little disappointed didn't make the play I'm gonna bring up Dale Barra Dale a strikeout victim his first time up Montreal three the Mets one that's in the third inning in New York Pitches low to Barra. Mets are having a surprisingly good year. Uh, Montreal, rather. Nobody picked them to be in the race, and they're only a half game out. We'll make it 2 and 0. Oh. Ball two, no strikes to Barra. Runner at first with two outs. Frank Tanana gets ready. And a foul back. Yogi Berra had two sons that went into professional ball. The other one dropped out. He didn't make it. This one made it to the major leagues, and he played with Pittsburgh for a long time. Also, uh, he has a brother, and Yogi has a son, played professional football. Him with Boston Baldwin. College or Boston University. Oh, he played for Baltimore Colts uh, professionally. Larry was a catcher in the uh, Mets organization for two years. Of course, Dale is here. Yogi Berra, uh, I understand, is enjoying his off season, playing a lot of golf. First time he's been off from baseball in many, many years. A 2-2 pitch to Barra, and he pops it up. Let's see, as Evans got room, he does, and he'll put it away. <laughs> Dale Barra fouls to the first baseman. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still a nothing-nothing game. <laughs> this big crowd at Tiger Stadium on this Sunday afternoon really getting into this ball game. And you can tell they're knowledgeable fans because they had the wave going at the right time when the Tigers were at the bat. Tried to unravel, unnerve the uh, opposing team. At, at the plate, you don't think about uh, the noise and the, because you're concentrating so much. But in the field, you have a tendency to, uh, to think about what's going on in the stands. Parrish will let it off. He had a walk his first time up. And he swings it a bit, strike one. Each team has threatened. The Tigers had him at first and third. Nobody out in the second inning and failed to score. There's a pop fly down the line and right. This might be a little trouble. No, Winfield's there. Ooh. Saw a lot of baseball as Winfield came over fighting the sun and the wind to get it. Yeah, long run by the big guy, but you see here, you'll see a lot of white. He doesn't bobbles it a little bit. That'll bring up Herndon, who had a solid single to left field. Pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Larry Herndon bats with one out, nobody on. No runs on two hits for the Tigers, no runs on six hits for the Yankees. 
And this is foul. You would have to say in the first 12 and a third innings in the last two outings that Shirley's pitched against the Tigers. He has dominated the Tiger batters. He certainly has their number and uh, that happens in baseball. There's another pop fly to right. Winfield is there to put it away. So Herndon is out number two and the batter will be Garbay. Well, on the same token, you remember a guy very much that pitched against the Yankees and was very successful, Frank Larry. Yes, sir. Uh, just some pitchers have a knack of getting certain type hitters out. And Frank Larry had great success against the Yankees. Garbay, the batter with two outs, nobody on. And a roller to first base. That'll end the third inning on an easy one, two, three inning for Shirley. And at the end of four, it's still nothing, nothing. They have dominated the hitters. Well, you never thought this would happen in the game. Uh, a day like today, a very strong breeze blowing the straightaway center fielder. Certainly looks like it's a, a hitter's day, but uh, nobody's been able to get the ball up in the air. Bobby Meacham will lead it off for the Yankees. He had a single his first time up as we take a look at the wind, and you see it is a good breeze. It's shifting around. That one right now is blowing toward left center field. The one in right field is blowing over the roof there. Yep. But for the most part, it is blowing to right field. Bobby Meacham. He's had one of the six Yankee hits. Ready to bunt, and the pitch was in tight. Tanana fell behind Meacham three and one when he got the base hit. Here's a tap. Good play by Tanana. He just saved a base hit as he went high in the air to pick it up. Well, Meacham tries to check his swing here. And Tanana looks like a pretty good rebounder, particularly in high school. Makes a good throw to first base. Ball must have hit the plate to bound that high in the air. We understand the information from Chuck Wasilek. He was an all-state basketball player at Catholic Central High School. Well, he just picked off a rebound that saved a base hit. Here's Ricky Henderson. Ricky takes a strike. Henderson single to center field to open the ball game. Then with two runners aboard in the second inning, he bounced out to third base. One ball, one strike. The very speedy. Ricky Henderson waits on the 1 1 pitch. And a strike on the inside corner. And I think it'd be a safe guess if this fellow stays healthy and plays another eight, nine years, will become the best base dealer in history. He's got a good chance. He stole 106 bases in uh, 1983. He has averaged 82 stolen bases a year. My man. It's more than I stole <laughs> in my career. One ball, two strikes, and here's the pitch. They've got one in St. Louis. They yep. say if he gets on base enough, he'll steal 150 every year. But this fella gets on base a lot. Yeah. Because he, he hits for a high average. He's hit, hit in the 290s the last couple of years, and he gets a lot of base on balls. Ball two, strike two to Henderson. And the pitch from Frank Tanana, he stops. He says, we'll start over again. This is a key pitch. He wants to get this one over. He wants to get a certain pitch over. He doesn't want to go to three and two to Henderson.
but he does. Ball three, strike two. He tried to jam him good with a fastball and got it too far in. Henderson, a good three and one, three and two hitter. He likes the fastball and he figures he'll get it right now, but he might not. Ball three, strike two. Well, you can tell the veteran that uh, Frank Tennant is. He's not just going to take the first sign. He's going to make the hitter think a little bit at the plate. Maybe he's going to throw an off-speed pitch. He does, and he walks him. Ricky Henderson gets a walk. He changed up on him. He didn't get it over, and that's the first walk given up by Tanana. And it always happens to somebody like uh, Henderson, who has already this year 28 stolen bases, has been thrown out only one time. It's got to be a little bit of a, some comfort to Parrish to see a left-hander out there. He doesn't see many left-handers. Only in relief for the Tigers. And he likes to have somebody that will give him halfway chance to throw him out. Oh, he got him! Oh! It looked like he had him. Henderson was going. And then he slipped. Feet gave out from under him. Definitely was going to try to steal the base. Let's take a look at it again. A good shot there. You can see there he definitely was leaning. He slips. And does he get his hand back? Oh, we couldn't tell from that angle. Very close at first, and even though he didn't get him, Tanana sent a message over there. Beware. I don't think I pitch out this time. Here's one hit the center field. Henderson's going to tag up, I think. Let's see. Is he going to go? Yep. No, he goes back. He went about halfway, and then he stopped. Now Henderson has jammed his knee. Here's a throw by Chet Lemon, a strong throw right on the money. Look at Tanana backing up the play. Actually, he was a little too close to the yeah. to the guy because it would have got by him too if it had got by Lou Whitaker, but it didn't happen. Henderson, uh, I don't believe him. I think he's having the old decoy right here. Yeah, he gave him the little uh, decoy. The old he... bad leg trip trick and then all of a sudden take off. I'll tell you, Tanana's in this ball game, isn't he? He's been all over the infield. The batter is Mattingly with a runner at first and two outs. Don Mattingly has a double and bounce to the mound. St. Louis got two, and they lead the Cubs 2-0. Montreal three, New York one. They're in the fourth inning. He's got him picked off. Oh, he's safe at second. Darrell gets the, but he makes a high throw here. It's the only way they possibly call him safe. And I don't know. Alan Trammell certainly upset, thought he had him. You can see it there. Darrell gets the throw and now makes a high throw to Allen. And I thought he got his hand in. Yeah, I think he's safe. Stolen base for Ricky Henderson. So he's going to have to get Mattingly out with a runner at second. I tell you, Henderson has lived dangerously this inning. They almost got him at first, almost got him at second, but he's still alive and he carries the go ahead run. A 
And a strike to Mattingly. The key to the whole play, Al Kaline, as you pointed out, was the high throw from Evans. Had the throw been about letter high or belt high, would have been an easy play. Well, that's what you, you teach when you play catch. You always throw for the man's chest. There he goes to third and safe, and we got a break yep. there. So it evens out. Ball hit the umpire, or otherwise Henderson would have scored. Number 30. I don't really see much advantage in, in, in this deal, but I guess he got a good jump on Tanana, and he... Well, you know, he's, he never gets thrown out. He's only been thrown out one time, and now it puts the infield in a very diffi difficult position here in air. Lance throwing the ball sidearm. You can see the ball sinking, and that happens whenever you throw a ball sidearm, the ball will tail into the base runner. He's at third with two outs, and it's one and one to Mattingly. That ball got by Brookins. It hit the umpire. Otherwise, Henderson would have walked home. This is going to be foul into the corner in right field. So Nana got away with the pitch. He hung a yep. curveball. Mattingly pulled it foul. One ball, two strikes to Mattingly with a runner at third, two outs, no score. Frank Tanana's ready. We'll make it two and two. This is the hitter he wants to get. He doesn't want to pitch to Winfield in this spot. It's ball two and strike two to Mattingly. Who hangs in tough against left-handers? Ball three. Ball three, strike two. And the payoff pitch. Fly ball to center. Could get him out of it as Lemon cruises back in center field. Yankees threatened, failed to score. We go to the bottom of the fifth in a nothing nothing ball game. Now for the latest in news, sports, and weather, join Gerald Harrington and Deborah Silverstein. That's tonight for News 4 at 6 o'clock right here on Channel 4. That ball that Mattingly hit carried surprisingly well in the deep center field. It looked like a routine fly, and Lemon had to get on his horse to run it down, Al Kaline. That shows just how hard the wind is uh, blowing. He has picked up quite a bit since the start of the ballgame. Darrell Evans takes it inside. And again, I am amazed that the, there hasn't been any run scored in this game. One ball, one strike to Evans. He bounced to first base his first time up. Darrell fouls it away. First time up, Evans had runners at first and third, one out. He hit the ball hard, straight to Mattingly, who made the play at the plate to cut down Herndon. Now he waits on the one-two pitch. That'll make it two and two. Ball two, strike two. Ball three. Well, Bob Shirley, much like Frank Tanana, never gives in to the hitters. He will throw breaking pitches. Three and two. He does. Evans pops it up. This may be out of play. It's going to land beyond the Tiger dugout. He threw him a curveball. Three and two. 
They try to think along with the hitters. They they know the situations in the ball game, what what players like to hit, and they try to think along uh, pitchers and just go to the complete opposite of the of the hitters. So we do it again, three and two to the leadoff man. Bottom of the fifth inning, and there's no score at Tiger Stadium. Here's a base hit into center as Evans lines it into center field. The Tigers have the leadoff now. Chet Lemon, the batter, he struck out his first time up. I tell you, whatever else Lemon does, he puts some stability in the defense out there. He can play it. Yankees trying to guess along with the Tigers, call for the pitch out. Of course, Billy Martin is the uh, is the guy that calls the pitch out for the Yankees. Sparky Anderson this year for the Tigers used to be Roger Craig. Sparky doesn't like to bunt that much and he does use the hit and run quite a bit. Everybody knows it so they pitch out from time to time. Chester fouls it away. Lemon just missed a home run his last time up with two runners aboard. He hit one out of here well out of here and just missed the foul pole in left field. This is the first game Chet has played against the Yankees although he did pinch hit against New York. One ball one strike. There's one hit deep in the right way back and gone. A home run for Lemon. Well he missed one his last time up. And all of a sudden, Chet hit the ball hard, but he got it in the jet stream in right field. Chet Lemon's third home run of the year, a big one for the Tigers. We'll take a look at it as he drills it into right center, and Shirley knew it was gone. Two to nothing. The Tigers lead it, and the batter is Brookins. Here's the curve ball for a strike. Tommy flied to center field his first time up, and he pops it up behind the plate. Espino grabs it for the first out of the inning. Well, Tommy Brookins is out, and the catcher Espino. Gets his first look at a towering pop fly here on this Sunday. Here's Whitaker. Lou is 0 for 2. He struck out in the first inning and was out on a bunt play in a bang bang situation in the third inning. One strike to Whitaker. Curve ball hangs in tight, and the count is even at one and one. Tigers two, Yankees nothing. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Ball two, strike one. It's the first pitch we've really seen Bob Shirley overthrow. He was trying to get a little bit extra on the fastball. And he does and gets it over. Ball two, strike two. Three and two to Whitaker. He bats with one out and nobody on. 
Ball three, strike two. Trammell will bat next. Here's the payoff pitch. And a ball hit into deep right center, but Henderson's going to run it down. Whitaker hit it hard, but he didn't pull it enough. Ricky Henderson with great speed and a lot of room out there made the catch. This ball, a high fastball out over the plate. Henderson, look at the great speed. He's not a true finesse type outfielder, but with that tremendous speed allows him to make up for a lot of mistakes he makes in the outfield. Here's Trammell, who's had a single in two trips. And he pops it up. Mattingly loses it for a moment, but then he found it. Oh, Trammell is out on the first pitch. Tigers get two runs in the inning on the home run by Lemon. And at the end of five, they lead the Tigers 2 0. Yankees nothing as we go into the sixth inning. Dave Winfield, Don Baylor, and Willie Randolph will be the batters. Frank Tanana started off and a uh, little rocky go. They had three hits in the first inning, failed to score as he got Baylor to fly to left field with two runners aboard. They got two more aboard in the second inning. He got the dangerous Ricky Henderson to bounce out. Then in the fifth inning, Henderson stole second, stole third, and he was there with two outs when Mattingly flied to center. It was Willie Harton that first base. Uh, the Yankees have been winning ever since uh, Willie Horton start coaching at first base. Willie taking some swings in batting practice. I think he's only seven hits away from 2000 and uh, Billy Martin says it presents itself maybe late in the year they might activate him. You still have a chance George Kell. No, no, no. <laughs> There's Winfield and he takes a strike. Joe LaPointe told me yesterday that the Willie Horton testimonial dinner was a total success. Absolute sellout. And that's tremendous. Yes. Tremendous. Saw Gates Brown today, this morning. The Gator. There's one hit deep into left field, into the corner, and foul. Not by much. Put a uniform on that man, and he's out. Yeah. Been a home run in the round ballpark. Might have been a home run in New York. Where it's only, what, 310 down the line? Anyhow, Gator looks good, looks healthy. Riding on his motorcycle. Over signing autographs at the store across the street. Domino's uh, sports shop over across the street from Tiger Stadium. It's strike two to Dave Winfield. And a ball hit the left for a base hit. He reached out, got a curve, and he pulled it into left field. Well, Winfield gets his second hit. The leadoff man is on in the sixth inning, and the batter is Baylor. Pretty good pitch. The ball looked like it might have been on the outside corner, maybe possibly a ball, but Dave Winfield with those long arms reaches out. Drives the ball in the hole. I'm sure Tanana wanted to get the pitch low, break the curve low, and he hung it in the strike zone up around the letters. There's a strike to Baylor. Hey, uh, George, excuse me. Actually, most of the hits by the Yankees have been on the ground, and you can't ask the pitcher to do any more than that. Baylor fly to left field his first time up then he struck out. He bats with Winfield at first and nobody out. And a pitch inside makes it one and one. Aridio Lopez now getting up in the Tiger bullpen. One ball one strike to Baylor. Julio Lopez throws in the Tiger bullpen. Yeah. 
and the one one pitch coming up to Baylor. He got Don to swing at a bad pitch makes it one and two. He's been featuring to Don Baylor pitched him hard inside and then thrown him very very slow pitches. No hard sliders but either hard inside or very slow pitches. One and two to the big guy as Tanana gets the sign. Well, he got him right on the fist and he fouled it back into the upper deck. Don Baylor has been hit more than by more pitches, but he still is a very determined man and uh, still goes into the pitch. Tiger infield extremely deep for this fellow. One ball, two strikes. This might be the double play they were looking for. And it is. They turned the double play. Well, you have to, George Kell, appreciate the play by uh, Tom Brookins at third base. A very tough, difficult, sort of in between hop. And then make a good throw. Look at that. Ball comes up at the end. He makes the throw. A good throw to Lou Whitaker. And, of course, sweetness just makes it as sweet as anybody can possibly make a double play. They turn a big, big double play here in the sixth inning. There's two outs with nobody on. The batter is Randolph. And Willie takes a strike. I think Frank Tanano is going to appreciate more than anything else on the Detroit Tigers, plus the fact of playing at home, uh, the defensive ability of the infield Tigers put out there. Here's a bunt, and we'll see the young man get off the mound and make the play, and he does. Tanano throws him out. No runs on a hit. We go to the bottom of the sixth, and the Tigers lead it to nothing. Gibby's fly to center and struck out in two trips. Tigers two, Yankees nothing. That'll make it one and one. Tigers trying to make it three out of four. The Yankees trying to split the four-game series. Gibby lays off a low breaking ball. Showed a lot of patience with that one. Ball two, strike one. Look out. Ball three. This will be a very interesting pitch to see if Shirley comes at him with a fastball, three and one, or will he throw the breaking ball? Here it is. He hit him on the fist with a breaking ball. Shirley came right at him and broke his bat. So Gibson is out and the batter is Parrish and we'll look at our upcoming TV schedule. This coming Tuesday night we'll be in Boston at 7 o'clock. Then on Wednesday night we'll be in Boston at 7.30 starting time. And next Saturday we'll be at home against Toronto 7 o'clock. It'll be Saturday night and Sunday June 30th at 1 o'clock against the Blue Jays. Lance Parrish is 0 for 1, and he taps it back toward the mound, and Barra picks it up and gets him. Good play by Barra, who fielded the ball with his bare hand and made the play at first base. Well, Lance hits this, looks like an off-speed changeup on the end of the bat, and Barra makes a great play, barehanded play, actually had more time than, than he thought, but it makes a fine play. That's two outs, and it'll bring up Herndon, who's had one hit today. California got four in the first inning in Chicago. I think they got three in the first inning over there yesterday en route to a win. Ball 
two no strikes Montreal five the Mets one in the sixth inning Cardinals two Chicago nothing in the fourth Philadelphia two Pittsburgh one in the sixth inning there's a towering fly ball to deep center wind is really carrying this ball Ricky Henderson pulls it in and at the end of six it's still the Tigers two and the Yankees nothing and Frank Tanana Yankees have out hit the Tigers seven to four but a two run homer by Chet Lemon has been the difference in the game in the Tiger fifth inning Darrell Evans led off with a single and with one strike on him Chet Lemon lined one into the lower deck and right center field Juan Espino will lead off. He popped it up in the second inning, single to center field in the fourth inning. And he lines it to center, a base hit for Espino. And for the second straight inning, they put the leadoff man on against Tanana. It doesn't take uh, much time. It actually hits a good pitch. The ball was down in the strike zone, lines it up the middle. This is his first ball game. He has just been brought up. Just received the attendance figures, 40,929. 40,929. Dale Barra, the batter, and the Tiger bullpen goes to work. Here's a strike to Barrow. Lopez again and uh, Bill uh, Cher. Cher. Lopez shouldn't take too much time because he was throwing the last inning in case needed. And the ball hit slowly to Brookins. He got him. Hey, that was some kind of a play. Tommy couldn't get it out of his glove at first. Gave it underhand to Whitaker. And Espino does not run like Ricky Henderson, and they were able to get him. Another good play by Tommy Brookins. He has certainly done the job playing for the Tigers uh, defensively. He has the last several years also doing a lot more with the bat. So with one out, Bobby Meacham comes on. Bobby Meacham had a single in the second inning. Then he bounced to the mound. Tanana picked it off on a good play to throw him out in the fifth inning. And a strike right down the middle of the fastball. One strike to Meacham. Bobby Meacham is a switch hitter. There goes the runner. Throw to second, and he's going to be out. They had the hit and run on. Meacham swung and missed, and Dale Bear is out at second on a great know. throw. Looking at the expression of Billy Martin, this might have been uh, on his own. But Meacham swings and misses the, the pitch. You can see the ball is there in plenty of time. What a great throw by Parrish. Well, you should see the expression of Billy Martin in the dugout. He is throwing his arms every which way. So that must have been a missed sign. Meacham checks his swing. Here's Billy Martin in the uh, Yankee dugout. Yeah, he is a little bit upset. And a line drive right straight at Brookins. Meacham hit the ball hard. Right straight at Brookins. We go to the bottom of the seventh. It's still the Tigers two and the Yankees. A two-run homer by Lemon has been the only scoring in the ballgame. Garbay is 0 for 2. He's bounced to third and he's bounced to first. And time call for a moment. 
Willie Hernandez making his way to the bullpen in left field. And I think Hernandez is going to start throwing right now, which Al would, would seem to indicate he might be going to come in the game if he starts throwing this early. Well, usually, and uh, certainly the proper way to use any outstanding reliever, if they warm up, they usually go in the game because you don't want to leave it down in the bullpen. Well, he is beginning to throw in the Tiger bullpen. 2 nothing. Tigers lead seventh inning. Tigers would love to get another run. Garvey fouls it away. Ball to strike line. We're going to be in Boston on Tuesday night and Wednesday night. Boy, what a big series at Fenway Park. Tigers open there tomorrow night. Walt Terrell will pitch. Jack Morris on Tuesday night and Randy O'Neill on Wednesday night. Ball three. Three and one to Garvey. They've got action in the Yankee bullpen. This is Bordy throwing for the Yankees. And Garbe pops it up. He might have helped him out yep. on the 3-1 pitch. That was not a good swing on 3-1. You have to be a little bit more disciplined than that. But uh, Bob Shirley has never gave in to him. Looked like he uh, was tailing the ball away from him. We'll bring up Evans, who singled and scored in front of Lemon's home run in the fifth inning. Bob Shirley delivers, and a pop fly behind the plate, being chased by Espino, but out of play. Doug Bear, a right-hander, and Willie Hernandez, a left-hander, throwing for the Tigers. Well, I think Doug Bear is just getting some uh, throwing in on the bullpen. Lopez was throwing, but again, Hernandez throwing, and that's generally the indication that he is coming into the game. There's a fly ball into right center field. Well hit, Winfield back, can't get it, and on to second goes Evans. I don't know. Winfield might have lost that ball for a moment out there. Looks well, like it, it is a very difficult sun field. I think possibly we'll look at it again. He might have been thinking he's running into uh, closer to the wall than he really was. You see, the ball was away, so he really couldn't get all of his uh, his body behind that swing. Let's take a look at it again. And you can see there he took his eye off the ball because he thought he was against the fence. A better angle, and you see there he takes his eye off the ball. And went under his glove, not over his glove. They're going to make a change right now. They want the big right-hander, Bordy, to come on and pitch to Lemon. Shirley has pitched an outstanding ball game. Only the two-run homer by Lemon. Yeah, he has done an excellent job. That's Mark Connors, the pitching coach for the Yankees. And Rich Bordy, which is not a bad selection, he has done extremely well against the Detroit Tigers this year. And, you know, formerly with the Cubs, and throws a lot of breaking pitches, a lot of slow, off-speed pitches. And he has certainly given all the right-handed batters a lot of problems. But again, another... A struck out and lined a two-run homer to right field. And you see the record of Rich Bordy. He's done a real good job for the Yankee. He has pitched the last two years for the Chicago Cubs. He got Chester to swing at a high curveball, one and one. And he very seldom will ever throw uh, two fastballs in a row. He, he has a hard slider and, uh, and two different kind of uh, curveballs. A hard one and a slow one, and he likes to throw the breaking pitches to the right-handed batters. One ball, one strike. Evans at second, one out. And here's a ground ball to the shortstop. Bobby Meacham goes to first, and Lemon is out. 
That's out number two in the seventh, and it'll bring up Tom Brookins. Tom Brookins has flied to center and fouled to the catcher in two trips. Rich Sporty gets ready. And a strike to Tommy. Big sweeping curveball. The runner at second is Darrell Evans with two outs. What am I get one and one? Well, you can't give ground on a big guy like this. He has that big sweeping curve, and you give a little, and he's got it on the end of your bat. We'll make it one and two. One well, ball. if you, George, excuse me, if you guess a uh, breaking pitch, you will be right eight out of ten times. Pretty good percentage. One ball, two strikes. And here's a pop fly base hit in the left. That'll get a run in. Tommy Brookins drilled it in the left, and the Tigers lead it 3 0. And believe me, that is a big run here at Tiger Stadium, the way that wind is blowing. It wasn't the, uh, the best swing in the world, but certainly got the job done. He reached out, one handed the ball over the third baseman's head. He didn't hit it hard, but in the right spot. Three nothing. Tigers lead as Whitaker steps in. Sweet Lou is looking for his first hit today. And a strike. Good breaking ball at the knees. And they could let Tommy Brookins run here because uh, they can guess a, a slow breaking pitch. The catcher is untried, so maybe try to score another run. Strike two, he got the outside corner. Well, I definitely would run him now with two strikes. You get, even if uh, he is thrown out at second base, you have Lou Whitaker leading off the eighth inning. It's strike two to Whitaker with a runner at first. A big two out single by Brookins. Gets the third run in. Here's a line shot, base hit in the right. Brookins will hold it second. Whitaker gets his first hit as he lines it in the right field. Well, you knew it was a matter of time before Lou gets a hit. Again, a breaking pitch, and he goes down and scrapes it off the ground. It looked like he was using a rake instead of a bat. But Lewis uh, certainly having an outstanding year for the Tigers. Again, another one. <laughs> Six nothing. Toronto leads Boston. They're in the sixth inning, and Milwaukee leads Baltimore three nothing. Alan Trammell has had one hit today in three trips. have good speed on the bases. Trammell gave the double look to Al Clark on that one. Tommy Brookins, the runner at second. Whitaker at first. Two outs. The Tigers have scored one here in the seventh. That'll make it one and one. One ball, one strike to Trammell. We'll make it one and two, and Allen is really upset with the call on both strikes. One inside, one outside. 
Take a look at this pitch. Well, it's a pretty good pitch. One ball, two strikes. And he struck him out with a big sweeping curve. Tigers get a run in the inning on three hits. They strand two. And at the end of seven, the Tigers three and the Yankees nothing. As a Detroit Tiger. Willie Hernandez coming in to try to save this ball game for Frank Tanana. You see his record four and three. And having another excellent year, 14 saves on the year. It'll be the top of the batting order for the Yankees. Ricky Henderson, Ken Griffey, and Don Mattingly. And the first pitch coming up from Hernandez. It's a ball. Al, you are so right. Frank Tanana Jr. did himself proud here today in his hometown. Seven innings of shutout ball against the Yankees. An awesome right-handed hitting ball club. There's a foul fly that'll be out of play into the Yankee bullpen. Willie still bothered a little bit, not as much as he was by a bad neck. You know the play that he dove for the ball. I believe it was in Yankee Stadium. I'm not sure about that. He dove for the ball. Toronto. In Toronto, right. And uh, it hurt his back. He got back spasms, and it went up to the neck. So uh, he's still not 100%, but he can still do the job. I might get one and two to Henderson. Ricky had a single in the first inning, bounced out in the second, walked in the fifth inning. And he's had two stolen bases. One ball, two strikes. We're in the eighth inning. The Tigers three and the Yankees nothing. And the pitch to Henderson. It's a ball, makes it two and two. Tigers got two in the fifth on a two-run homer by Lemon and one in the seventh. And here's one into deep right center. On the go is Lemon. He won't get it. It bounces off the wall. It'll be a triple for Henderson. Oh, he hit it well into the wind in deep right center field. Well, you can see Lemon going after this ball still not going to go 100%. He wanted to get the ball inside. He gets it out over the plate. The wind is going to do the rest. You see Lemon dragging the leg. He knows he cannot catch up to the ball, so he's not going to take any chances of, of re-injuring that leg of his. That'll bring up Griffey with a runner at third base. They're going to make an appeal play at second base. And safe, the call comes from Riley, who said he did touch second base. Boy, what a play that would have been. Did you ever miss a base? I don't think so. I don't either. I don't think so. Griffey fouls it. I never miss first base. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you got to get that one. You got to get that one to get a base hit. One strike to Griffey. They're going to give up a run for an out. Tigers lead by three here in the eighth inning. One strike to Griffey. And another foul ball. Willie not making real tough pitches. That time he hung the breaking pitch inside. He liked to get the pitch, particularly when he throws sidearm away from those left-handed hitters. It's strike two to Griffey with a runner at third. Nobody out. There it is. One ball, two strikes. Toronto jumping all over Boston. Eight to nothing in the seventh inning. And the one-two pitch coming up. And he fouls this one away. Griffey hanging tough. Willie Hernandez. 
Hernandez pitching in relief of Frank Tanana, who shut him out through the first seven innings. And a fly ball to center. That'll get the run in. Tigers trade an out for a run in the eighth inning, and the Yankees get on the board to make it three to one. Bring up Mattingly with one out. Mattingly's had a double today in three trips. Hernandez delivers another fly ball center field. Drifting back, still going back, and has it. Got it up in the breeze and it went deep in the center, but Lemon hauled it in. So there's two outs. And the batter will be Winfield. This big fellow's had two hits today, singled in the first and the sixth. Tigers three, Yankees one in the eighth inning. Two outs, nobody on. As Winfield waits on the pitch, he hits it down to Trammell. Easy play for Allen, and the inning is over. Well, Hernandez gets them out after giving up the leadoff triple in one run. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Tigers three, and the Yankees one. this weekend for this big series a great tribute to Tiger fans the pitch to Gibson and a pop fly in the left field Griffey is there and he has it and there's one out don't forget our TV schedule we're going to be in Boston Tuesday night at 7 o'clock we'll be there again Wednesday night at 7 30 and next weekend, we'll be at home on Saturday night against Toronto at 7 o'clock and on Sunday against the Blue Jays at 1 o'clock. A big series coming up at Fenway Park. Here's a check swing towards shortstop. It's twice in a row that Lance says. Hit it on the end of the bat to the third baseman. So there's two pitches and two outs here in the eighth inning. And the batter will be Larry Herndon. Larry's had one hit today and three trips. One for three. strike at the knees looking ahead to the top of the ninth inning the Yankees will be sending up Don Baylor Willie Randolph and Juan Espino we'll make it one and one Tigers bat in the bottom of the eighth two outs nobody on they lead by two Two, strike one. Forty came on in the seventh. He gave up a run scoring single to Brookins, then a single to Whitaker, but struck out Trammell to get out of the inning. There's one into right center field that'll be picked off by Henderson. So the Tigers go quietly in the eighth inning, nothing across. And at the end of eight, the Tigers three and the Yankees one. Be sending up Don Baylor, Willie Randolph, and Juan Espino. Willie Hernandez came on in the eighth, gave up one run, but got the next three batters. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're watching Tigers 85. 
Now join Fred Hickman for a complete wrap up of the weekend sports action on Sports Final Edition. That's tonight at 11.30 right here on Channel 4. Baylor the batter leading off in the ninth and this big crowd of nearly 41,000. Rooting for Willie Hernandez to get him out. And the pitch to Baylor is a hot shot to shortstop. One hop to Trammell and there's one out in the ninth. Baylor hit it like a bullet. One hop straight to Trammell. Well, this ball was hit like a shot. Hits on the infield grass, but Alan Trammell makes it look as easy as can be. You see a pretty good pitch out over the plate. Well, he has great soft hands. That'll bring up Willie Randolph. And he fouls it away. I tell you what you'll see on Willie Hernandez a lot. And you know this, Al Kaline. They swing in a lot of first pitches. They don't want to get to the point where he'll throw them the screwball. So they figure they'll get the fastball more on the first or second pitch. And they jump on a lot of first pitches. Inside makes it one and one. Baylor hit the first pitch. Randolph jumped on the first pitch. This is fouled away. That was a screwball. One ball, two strikes. We're in the ninth inning at Tiger Stadium. Tigers three, Yankees one. And the one two pitch coming up to Randolph. And a pop fly behind second. Whitaker backing up, and he has it. Whitaker picked it off. That ball was blowing away from him. And a great play by Lou Whitaker. It looks like he turned around a little too soon, and the ball kept carrying. But what an outstanding play. He backs up of maybe a step or two too soon, uh, too soon but it Outstanding uh, reflexes by the young man. That's the second out in the ninth inning, and the batter is Espino. Juan Espino's had two hits today and three trips. It's like Philly samples in the on deck circle. Strike to Espino as he swung at a bad pitch. Well, he's hit two fastballs for base hits, and I'm sure Willie knows what's going on. And uh, he throws in a screwball on the very first pitch. It's strike one to Espino as Hernandez delivers. Strike two. And he's got him fishing for the curve up for the screwball. We'll look at that last screwball and He'll have him fishing for it again if he'll go for it. Willie gets ready, and here's the pitch. Oh, he threw him a fastball. Right down the middle he came at him, and Espino got a piece of it. Boy, if he was looking for that, he was the last guy in the ballpark that was looking for it. Well, I think there's a good chance he will get the screwball again. Oh, I think so. Ball hit the third. Brookings goes to first, and it's all over. Willie Hernandez gets a one, two, three in the ninth, and the Tigers win it by a score of three to one. A great pitching performance by Tanana, and a great save by Hernandez. We'll be right back after this message. Wanted to play in. He pitched a shutout for seven innings. Sparky took him out. He went to the bullpen, got his ace. Hernandez, who gave up a triple, a leadoff triple to Henderson. He scored on a fly ball, and that was it. So Frank Tanana. American Dream. Will be donated in his name to the Children's Hospitals of Michigan. He's won three, lost seven. 
The Yankees had one run, nine hits, no errors. Bob Shirley. Well, for Al Kaline, Eli Zarrett, and Al Ackerman, this is George Kemp. Batting six, playing center field, Chet Lemon. Batting seventh, Darrell Evans at first base. Batting eighth, the DH, Barbaro Garbet. Batting ninth, playing third base, Tom Brookins. Defensively, for the Red Sox, Boggs, Huffman, Barrett, and Buckner in the infield. Rice, Lines, and Evans in the outfield. Gedman behind the plate, and Bob Ojeda on the mound for the Boston Red Sox that we mentioned at the top of the show. He has always been very, very tough on the Detroit Tigers, pitching two complete shutouts against the Tigers a year ago. Now here's George Kell. Right out, K-line as Lou Whitaker steps in to lead it off. Whitaker, Trammell, and Gibson will be the Tiger batters. And a strike. Bob Ojeda. He was a starter last year. Red Sox uh, had been having bullpen troubles, and he volunteered to go down there, much as Rigetti did for the Yankees. Started the year in the bullpen, but he's back in the starting rotation. Here's one down the line in left field. This may be extra bases for Whitaker. He's going to have to hurry and to suck at the throw, and he'll make it standing up. So a leadoff double for Whitaker starts the ball game. Well, what we've seen so much, uh, much this year, Lou Whitaker leading off the ball game with a base hit. Throws a high fastball up and out over the plate, and Lou just lines it down the left field line. You can see how close it is to the wall. Rice does a good job, but never. 